After an almost seven year hiatus, the British Film Collectors Convention has returned. We're in a new venue and despite some limitations, the event was buzzing most of the day. 4K video projection, 35mm and Super 8 film, all on the same bill, complete with a host of real film dealers. What more could anyone want? October 2016 was the last time we held a BFCC, so we had to accept a few compromises to get things back up and running once more. I'll go through a few of these as we go through this video, but in spite of a few minor issues, getting everyone back together once more made it all worthwhile. We weren't expecting so many dealers to book tables, but it was a big help and despite meaning we didn't quite have the amount of space we were anticipating, there were stalls everywhere and plenty to look at and purchase. Super 8 and 16mm films have been the mainstay of the BFCC over the years, but the odd 35mm trailer and perhaps shorts or features can also be found as well as an increasing number of dealers selling home video discs. There never seems to be a shortage of film projectors on sale and of course plenty of features on both 16mm and Super 8. This is Ray Bruno's stand who has been supporting the BFCC for a lot of years now and sat just here talking to fellow organiser Mark Williams is Spiz Energy who gave an entertaining introduction to the morning Laurel and Hardy show. As we go out of this dealer room into the main hall you can clearly see that we had a few too many light issues. Also the sliding screen door between the kitchen area and the hall was broken which it wasn't when we looked at the hall last year so that will need to be repaired and we were told we wouldn't have the use of the main front entrance which used to have curtains on it and a blackout in the exterior window and that would have stopped much of the light leakage there. If we do use the hall again though we'll be able to deal with most of this. This is renowned films who many of you may know as Talking Pictures TV, one of the best channels available on television here in the UK that I know many film enthusiasts watch often as they specialise in older films and involve many of the stars who appeared in them. Talking Pictures regularly hosts their own conventions where you can meet many of the actors and actresses in person. This is Classic Home Cinema stand run by Phil and Denise Sheard. Classic still have a physical shop in Cleethorpes if anyone ever fancies visiting. They are also the biggest Super 8 film dealer in the world today, so a treasure trove of film awaits if you do have a venture over to the East Coast in the Cleethorpes area. Adjoining Classic Home Cinema was this surprise, a book specifically on the history of the Elvis Presley films on Super 8. It's £37.99 and available from www.8millimeterelvis.com for anyone who is interested. This chap is Stuart Hilliker shooting another YouTube video, so coming soon I think. He's very good. This is actually Simon McConway's Elmo GS1200 with HID lamp conversion. Mark Norton had spent much time testing his GS1200 Zenon for the big day, but as soon as the lamp was struck for the first show, it refused to strike. Fortunately, Simon was there with his machine and the problem was quickly overcome. Now, this is Paul Vanessis talking on the left here. Many of you will know Paul's work and particularly what he's been doing lately because he's the man responsible for finding missing Doctor Who episodes and preparing all the Doctor Who series for release on Blu-ray disc. Well then Mark, what are we about to show here? Well, we've got a Lauren Hardy on, tit for tat I think it is. And who's this doing the introduction that we can't see in the dark? It's busy doing the introduction over there. This is my own Elmo GS1200 projector and this one has an HTI lamp conversion. 
This means it's the brightest projector in the UK, so perfectly suited for duty at the BFCC, which is what the lamp conversion was actually done for. This is an anamorphic scope reel from Classic Home Cinema, the pre-title and title sequence from The World Is Not Enough, and I got the impression Phil Sheard of Classic was rather pleased with how it looked, projected 24 feet wide. Scope releases were always the most sought after on Super 8, as it enabled us to project the biggest images in the home. Dave Locke was on duty at the very first BFCC in 1976 and carried on until about 1990, but he's done a few stints since then so I asked him to assume the position just to get this shot of him 47 years after his first appearance as a convention projectionist. It was me to blame for not cleaning the gate though, so sorry about that. Then it was time for the 35mm shows to be interspersed with 4K video projection between reel changes. This is Simon Nichols getting his Portacini portable 35mm aligned and ready. It's got to be right. I've never seen them make a lot of difference. Well, that's done it. That's, oh, that's done it on the top, yeah. A perfect fit, and it's not a zoom lens, so perfect placement of the projector. Spot on. And Simon's wife, Holly, was there to give support too. He's doing well, Lee. The pressure's on. He's doing on. all right, isn't he? Yeah. The pressure's yeah, on. Yeah, you can just see the sweat. Taking it in his stride. Yeah. I think he's hiding it well. <laughs> So what are you lacing up here, Simon? Uh, it's a reel of trailers of varying uh, decades. Not quite sure. Okay. Enormous. This is a reel of trailers Simon assembled some time ago, and it was exactly the type of show we've been putting on at the BFCC for years. There were some really historic items in here, and most were in near perfect condition, with little trace of the dreaded colour fade suffered by so many pre-1982 prints. And in case you're wondering, this is the trailer to the Disney film, The Black Hole. This is the trailer to Emil Inc's Dead Community Guild, which is interesting because it was shot entirely on a Canon 514 Super 8 camera, and it's actually getting, or has had, a limited theatrical release in the USA this year. It looked really good up there on the big screen too. And so did this one. This is a trailer to Rob Murphy's feature documentary Splice Here, a projected odyssey, which tells of the demise of film in cinemas and its resurgence owing to the 70mm release of Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight. The 4K UHD disc of Le Mans 66 filled 20 feet of the scope screen and looked fabulous. In fact, all the other 4K UHD titles selected to have an extract shown on the big screen look fabulous too, because they were all 70mm films, so no surprise there really. But 35mm was the star of the show, and the last reel of silent running was a real treat. So sharp and hard to believe 35mm looked this good back in 1971, but it did, and there was the proof for all to see. Simon brought the 66th BFCC to a conclusion with the opening reel of Crimson Tide, a scope print and what I consider to be the best submarine film ever made. So 35mm and 4K in the same show complemented each other well, and I think it's something we'd like to do again in the future. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, you know where to come.
Well, this is actually the close of the BFCC now. I wouldn't say it's the most successful one we've ever done, but at least it's got us back. I think we probably need a, either need to make some modifications to this venue when we come next time, or we've got to find another venue. As it turned out it wasn't actually big enough for us. But the 24-foot wide CinemaScope screen did fit in just about. We haven't quite got the room at the top to show it full, but we projected about 20 feet wide scope on this, so that's the big difference with the British Film Collectors Convention and anywhere else. We have got this big screen and thanks to Keith Wharton for keeping it safe all these years. Hopefully it's going to be kept safe for a while longer and be able to do other shows with it. So that's the plan. We'll see what happens from here. But it's been a very successful day. We had a good number of people in, probably as many as the last event in 2016, if not more. So that worked out all right. Thank you to Simon Nichols on 35mm, Mark Norton on Super 8, Mark Williams, Mick O'Regan, everyone who made this event possible. It's been a great team effort and without all of you this event today would not have happened. So thank you and anyone I've missed off on this, consider yourself thanked because today has been wonderful to get back and see everyone. I think we should have done this afternoon's programmes this morning, but you live and learn. We've always done it that way around, and I didn't expect that the hall was going to be so different, and unfortunately, there was just too much light coming in. So next time, we'll be ready for it, or we'll find another venue. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, and perhaps consider subscribing. So I'll be encouraged to carry on creating content like this. Until the next video, from me and the 24-foot-wide CinemaScope screen, Bye-bye for now.